Tom Harbin here on the news. You need to know this. Most of us are still feeling the effects of a struggling economy, but the corporate elite and the Wall Street banksters are doing better than ever. Many corporations have seen record profits in recent years, which have fueled buying sprees on Wall Street, pushed the Dow Jones to an all-time high. But the income gap between workers and CEOs, which has gone up almost 20% since 2009, shows that all that profit is going straight to the top. This is exactly why many people don't feel the effects of the modest economic recovery, because this recovery is not our recovery. All the gains are going directly to the top 1%. And this is why corporations are actively fighting the part of the Dodd-Frank Act that directs corporations to report the income differentials between workers and CEOs. In 1960, the average CEO is paid about 40 times as much as the average worker. By 1990, CEOs were raking in over 100 times the amount their workers got. And by 2011, some corporate executives, like the one who runs J.C. Penney's, were making more than 1,700 times the salary of an average worker. A Bloomberg analysis indicates that everyday employees are the only ones who are not benefiting from the historic profits seen since the 2008 economic meltdown. This is not only unacceptable, but it's undesirable. Without a broad, inclusive economic base, long-term economic growth is impossible. It's time to stop the economic locusts who are sucking every last bit of profit out of our economy for the benefit of themselves alone. Dodd-Frank is forcing the oligarchs to disclose the income disparity. Now let's start working to correct it. Let's implement a Wall Street transaction tax, the Robin Hood tax, set limits on executive pay, and start taxing those who are obsessed with hoarding money. In screwed news, Republicans want to eliminate your overtime pay. A new $20,000 ad campaign targets working women, telling them to, to support the deceptively named Working Families Flexibility Act. Originally a Paul Ryan brainchild, this legislation would remove the requirement to pay someone time and a half when they work over 40 hours a week in exchange for so-called compensatory time off. The major catch, when and how that time off can be used, would be determined by your employer. The ad campaign will be featured on more than 100 websites that are typically frequented by women. The ad focuses on the bogus benefit of not having to choose between work and family. Fact is, employers can already offer flex time scheduling, and many already do. Workers should not have to give up a federally protected employment right to get that benefit. This ad campaign and the legislation it's supporting is a complete sham. Call Congress today and tell them you won't give up your right to overtime pay. In the best of the rest of the news, the next Senate race is on in Massachusetts. Yesterday, Representative Ed Markey beat fellow Representative Stephen Lynch to become the official Democratic candidate for Senate in that seat. The seat was vacated by now Secretary of State John Kerry, and it is likely to be an easy win for Democrats. As many in Massachusetts were understandably distracted by the Boston Marathon bombing, the primary race has not gotten much attention. Now that things are starting to settle down in Massachusetts, voters will have the time to focus on selecting their next U.S. Senator. During this, his primary victory speech, Markey declared, This campaign is about standing up to the special interests and the extreme Tea Party Republicans who want to stop progress and send our country in the wrong direction. Sure sounds great to me. The banksters and the Republican obstructionists better watch out. Soon there may be more than one outspoken Massachusetts senator willing to take them on. Just weeks after Maryland made headlines by repealing the death penalty, the Florida legislature is working to fast-track executions in their state. A new bill passed by Florida lawmakers would shorten the time between conviction and execution, despite that state leading the nation in the number of death row cases that have been overturned. When confronted with the fact that many people are found innocent years after their conviction, Republican State Senator Rob Bradley said, This is not about guilt or innocence, it's about timely justice. And Matt Gates, the bill's Republican sponsor in the Florida House, even went a step farther saying, only God can judge, but we can sure set up the meeting. Florida Republicans obviously don't understand our criminal justice system, nor our Constitution. It may come as news to Mr. Gates, but God doesn't convict criminals in our country. The court system does. And Mr. Bradley may want to consider that justice isn't at all timely when an innocent person is put to death. We should outlaw the barbaric practice of execution entirely. End capital punishment. And finally, for political candidates, endorsements from notable public figures can make or break an election. 
Well, former Governor Mark Sanford just, rece- just received one endorsement that he may want, not want. This week, Larry Flint, the publisher of Hustler magazine, formal, formally endorsed Sanford as his pick for South Carolina's next congressional representative. Flint praised Sanford for exposing sexual hypocrisy. According to Flint, Sanford's 2008 Argentinian affair demonstrated, quote, that traditional values are shameful and that he will not live by such rules, end quote. No word yet on whether Mark Sanford has thanked Mr. Flint for his glowing endorsement or how conservative voters in South Carolina feel about electing the nation's first candidate to be endorsed by Hustler magazine. We think Mark Sanford should be honored by the endorsement. After all, Larry Flint sure knows how to pick a boob. And that's the way it is today, Wednesday, May 1st, 2013. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.